I don't know what's going on with the state of Texas these days, but we have yet another pastor caught up in trouble in that state. I mean, it just really seems that God's judgment is coming down on the state of Texas right now as it comes to his church. And these men who pose as pastors in the pulpit when in reality they have other things in mind. We're going to talk here about what happened at Lakeside Baptist Church in Granbury, Texas, and their youth pastor, Luke Cunningham, because this is this is very concerning. Also, you know, did Cunningham pastor at any other churches prior to appearing at Lakeside? We're going to talk about that. What has the church's response to this situation been? We'll get into that as well. In just a second. Before we do that, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blonde Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? Well, I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work here and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple different ways you could do that. One, just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. You guys want to get access to all these videos before they hit the main YT platform? Well, when you join my Patreon, that's exactly what you are going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me again. It's patreon.com slash not by sight news big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so thank you as well your generosity is greatly appreciated on wednesday june 19th police arrested luke cunningham of lakeside baptist church he's 41 years old he was serving as the church's youth pastor the student minister and oh boy here we go again. You know, I've been talking about these pastors that have seemingly been falling by the wayside in the state of Texas. You got Tony Evans, you got Robert Morris, you got T.D. Jakes and everything he's been caught up in as of late with his good buddy Diddy. And now we have Cunningham. Now, it may not be as big of a name, but regardless, still, uh, we are seeing this exposure in the state of Texas. And, uh, I have a feeling there's there's a lot more to come. Now, here's the story with this. Uh, leaders of the church, they found out uh, back on June 2nd of allegations involving their youth pastor, Luke Cunningham, involved in inappropriate behavior with a little one. Now, they immediately started working with law enforcement on this. They were cooperating with them on this case. And they believed that they had enough evidence here against Cunningham. They brought it to other church personnel. They informed church staff. And eventually, Cunningham was put on an administrative leave. Now, that only lasted for a couple of weeks, obviously up until his arrest on June 19th. And now Cunningham has been terminated from his position. But also on June 2nd, church officials, they let the congregation know. So they did inform them about what happened. So I will give them credit for that because there are many churches that do not let their congregation know when these sorts of things happen with these pastors. Now, the church is claiming that the incident did not occur at Lakeside Baptist Church. Now, what we don't know is whether or not the little one here that Cunningham was involved with is or is not a member of Lakeside Baptist Church. They were only saying that the incident did not occur at the church. Doesn't mean that the individual involved with Cunningham is not a part of Lakeside Baptist Church. But again, the church was transparent with their congregation when they made the announcement on June 2nd. And they also encouraged, you know, all the parents to please speak with your little ones. You know, if they had any involvement with Cunningham whatsoever, if there was anything that was going on, check with them because... As we often say when we report on these sorts of situations, where there is one victim, there is usually much more. It's not usually just one that's involved here. Now, I mentioned at the top, has Cunningham ever been involved with any other churches in the past? The answer to that question is yes. 
from 2016 until 2020. He also served as a youth pastor for Turning Point Community Church in Lubbock, Texas. Now, that church was reached for comment after the news of Cunningham's arrest, but they did not respond. Hmm. Little suspect to me that they don't want to speak about this because, again, when you're dealing with the situation here in a pastor who gets caught up in inappropriate behavior with a little one, I just said it. There's usually more than one victim. And he was put in charge of little ones. So, to me, the thing that immediately sticks out is that when he was at turning point from between 2016 and 2020, there's a very good chance that there could have been more involved at that church as well under, you know, the care here of Cunningham. And that's a very scary situation because, you know, all in total, you're, you're looking at about eight years here, eight, nine years where Cunningham was instructed over these little ones, where he took his position of power, he manipulated it and, you know, used it for his own evil acts and intentions. I always say this, you know, as a youth pastor, you are given a responsibility to, to really, you know, help train these little ones up in the ways of the Lord. Uh, these are very young minds. They're impressionable. You were supposed to be helping them in their walk with the Lord, you know, at, you know, an, an age where, you know, there's a lot of pressure for them, especially in this day and age. You have a choice as to whether you're going to make a good impression or you're not. And if you take advantage of your position and you manipulate, you deceive, God is going to deal with you. Sometimes there's earthly justice. In this case here with Cunningham, sometimes there's not. Some of them get away with it, but they won't get away with it before God. Because then you see, well, you step into eternal justice. And eternal justice is a justice far worse than any sort of earthly justice that any of these men could receive. Now, I will also point out to you that Cunningham is being held on a $200,000 bond. I don't think he's getting out. That's a lot. That's a lot there. Sometimes they do get out. I think mean, sometimes they're like fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 bonds and these pastors are getting out of jail within a day. I don't think that's going to be the case here with Cunningham. So we will have to see once the sentencing occurs how much time he could be looking at spending behind bars. But something else at Lakeside... Uh, Baptists would point out, because this is an SBC church, and we know that the SBC has been embroiled in problems over the years. You know, they've been trying to put together this database to put, uh, you know, these sorts of dirty pastors in there. They haven't really been able to get anything together yet, and Lakeside says that they're working with Ministry Safe to put in more safeguards so this sort of thing doesn't happen again. But the one thing that I always question, I always bring this up, because it, it's so important, what are, you know, the qualifications for somebody getting a job as a youth pastor, or even a pastor in these churches? What sort of background checks are being done? Are they even being done? Do they check with the previous churches that these individuals work for? Did Lakeside contact Turning Point and ask them about, you know, anything suspicious that was going on with Cunningham prior to him coming over to Lakeside? Was there no interaction at all? How does this work? I have to say this to parents out there because I've been reporting on this sort of thing for the better part of eight years now. You can't just assume that you can trust your little ones with anybody just because they say they're a youth pastor or even a senior pastor for that matter. Because what we have now seen, because I've seen it myself, is that these sorts of individuals like Cunningham, they get very comfortable in a church because they know and they think for them that it's safe for them to enact these things out on these impressionable minds and take advantage of that position. When you hear the senior pastor say, okay, everybody, we have you know youth group tonight or we have youth group on a Sunday, so you can go ahead and send your teens on back there. It's just so easy, right? You're just entrusting your little ones to these individuals and you don't know who they are, but because they were a title, you're supposed to automatically trust them. And that's another thing I talk about all the time is titles. You can't trust the title. You can't. And another thing that I have to say is that, and I'm a strong advocate for this, is home churches. I know there's a lot of people that have been hurt in the church for a variety of different reasons. And I'm not saying that the idea of church is a bad thing. I'm not. What I'm saying is that so much of it now has been corrupted by not just people like Cunningham, you know, these wolves involved in inappropriate behavior, but false doctrine and, and, and these 
money-driven individuals. That's all they care about, you know, the prosperity gospel and everything else. But but home church, you know, get yourself involved, you know, if if you if you can, if you want to, with you know, some individuals have family members they know where you know they they just put these small groups together where, where they preach and the person that's the pastor of this of the, the home group is you know they they work a regular job too. They're not in it for the money. The worship is not about entertainment. It's not about the fame, you know, of all of that. It's just about genuine worship and learning about the word of God, learning about the gospel. You know, there are that a lot of people are moving to that now in these days that we're in. That they're going back to look at the book of Acts. You know, they're they're moving back to how it used to be. And not that there can't be problems in a home church. There can be, of course, there could be problems anywhere, but it is a lot less likely that this sort of inappropriate behavior and things like that are going to go on in, in that type of an environment. So I'll just end on that. And I've talked to many of you as well that have told me that you are part of a home church or you wish you were, um, that you're done with, you know, the, the building <laughs> portion here of, of church and, uh, and, and just how man has been so corrupted now into finding the safe place in the church where they can en enact these just horrible things. So... Um, I'll leave it there with you. I will have some more information for you over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash not by site news. You guys can let me know your thoughts, especially if you're somebody that's a member of Lakeside and you want to, you know, give some more insight as to maybe what you heard here. You can do that as well. Uh, and as always, again, if you appreciate my work here and you would like to contribute with a donation, you can hit the super thanks button or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016, no matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the wolves. We always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So that being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but... To actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.